जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय गोप जन वल्लभ गिरिवर जय गोप जन वल्लभ गिरिवर यशोदानंदन व्रज जन रंजन यशोदानंदन व्रज जन रंजन यमुना तीरा वनचारी यमुना तीरा वनचारी जय शोदानंदन व्रज जन रंजन यमुना तीरा वनचारी जय जय राधमाधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधमाधव राधमाधव राधे जय राधा गोपीनाथ राधा गोपीनाथ राधे जय सीता राम जय लक्ष्मण हनुमान सीता राम जय लक्ष्मण हनुमान जय जय प्रभु 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 जय जय प्रभु नित गौरारी बो हरिबो हरिबो नित गौर हरिबो
Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So we welcome you to 207th Prerna Festival. Hari Bo. So we are very fortunate to have His Grace Shuvilas Prabhu with us. This is really our great fortune that he has agreed to address us, especially the Ram Novi is going to come on 17th. So that's why we are preparing our consciousness through his lecture. I'll just share with you his introduction with you. Shuvilas Prabhu is a doctor, he, uh, he's done PhD. Dr. Shuvilas Prabhu is a lifestyle coach, storyteller and author. He studied patent law after completing his engineering degree, but finally chose the path of spiritual seeker. He has completed his PhD in leadership from Valmiki Ramayana and his thesis is considered path-breaking in the field of leadership studies from ancient texts. Ramayana, the game of life, is his best-selling series. He is also author of open-eyed meditations, mystical tales for a magical life, 5.5 ways to a lasting relationships. He has authored more than 40 thought-provoking books. The focus of his work is the application of scriptural wisdom to day-to-day -to -day life and addressing the needs of corporates and the youth through the power pack seminars. He has delivered more than 6,500 talks, inspiring more than 7 lakh people across 20 countries in the last 10 years. He is popular guest speaker at prestigious universities like Stanford, Princeton and Oxford University, to name a few, apart from several centers of IITs and IIMs in India. He has also spoken at Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Samsung, at their world headquarters at USA. So it's very, very, we are very fortunate to have him. And what is going to happen with you is, you are going to have one of the memorable you know, experiences in your life. And then the path towards the uh, bhakti to Ramayan hearing, it will be very, very easy for you. So we are very grateful to His Grace Shubhilas Prabhu to give his precious time. So let us welcome him by loudly chanting three times. Oh, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Om Agyan Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam One Ham Shri Guru Shri Yutaha Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvoitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamscha he Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vrishabhano Shute Devi Pranamami Ripriye Vancha Kalpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyevacha Patitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnave Bio Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shrivasadigaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna I would like to welcome all of you all to this Prerna festival. It's a great pleasure and honor to be sitting amidst all of you all. And hopefully whatever you're going to hear today will not only help you develop love for Ram, for the Ramayan, but also learn how to be mentally strong. Over the last so many years that I have been interacting with youngsters from across the world, 
I found one thing in common that somehow there is a lot of mental weakness among youngsters and more than anything else there is a lot of overthinking another level only you know of overthinking uh, people have reached so today i'll be sharing with you some amazing stories from the ramayan i mean if you're wondering how we can learn about overthinking and mental strength from ramayan you will realize that this what you're going to hear today in the next one hour is absolutely perfectly apt for that so all of you all get ready to hear two things one is lot of stories from the ramayan and as the stories from ramayan are flowing you will also find something else happening parallelly so there will be a lot of lessons that you can learn for your own lives a lot of things that you would want to remember for the rest of your lives please feel free to note down in your phones on your whatever if you have paper and pen because there's a lot that you would want to remember for the rest of your lives okay let me begin by telling you all a story one night a robber went to rob somebody's house and he climbed the wall to rob the person's house somehow when he climbed the wall the wall only broke and he fell down and died the robber's wife went and complained to the king the next day that my husband was going to perform his duties in the night and he died you know the wall broke obviously the king didn't find out what he was doing in the middle of the night on a wall you know so the king said get the owner of the house how come your wall broke he said i have no idea there was a mason who built that wall yesterday only you call him and figure out the king called the mason he said why did you make a wall that broke so quickly when somebody climbed on it the mason said i build walls every day but the person who built who made cement and gave me the cement was thin so the king said call that fellow so that cement mixer he was called and the king asked him why did you give cement that was thin he said every day i make cement but there is a potter who gets gives me a pot and that much quantity of water i used to make cement today he gave me a bigger pot so the king said get me that fellow who made the pot so the potter came the king asked him why did you make big pot he said every day i make the same type of pot but today when i was making the pot there was one lady standing in front of me somehow i got distracted and the pot became big the king said get that lady over here the, the king asked her why did you stand in front of this fellow she said i was waiting for my laundry and the laundry guy took time to come so that's why i got you know delayed so the king said get the laundry fellow here the laundry fellow was asked why you got late so the laundry fellow said see i i had my clothes on time but there was a sage sitting on the way and i was telling him to move he was not moving only the king said get the sage over here the sage was a moni baba he not speaking only anything he had taken a vow of silence all his life the king asked him why did you sit on the way the sage didn't say anything he kept quiet the king said you are the culprit and he hung him where it started and where it ended right this is how the mind works it starts here and it ends somewhere else only no connection between this and that correct this is called overthinking you are sitting to study and you are thinking about your future what will happen if i fail i won't get a job if i don't get a job what will happen who will marry me and if i don't get married how will where will i have children goes on and on no end only isn't it isn't that how overthinking works so today we're going to understand something very important first we're going to understand the difference between thoughts and thinking there is a difference between thoughts and thinking okay let me explain to you what the what the difference is thoughts are random you don't have control over thoughts anything can come in your mind correct anything means anything right now you are sitting over here you might be thinking of eiffel tower is there any connection between eiffel tower and sitting here nothing those are called thoughts 
they don't have logic they don't have anything systematic and they don't have any consequence with your today's life literally it's just random most people have a lot of thoughts but if you focus on those thoughts those thoughts lead you in different different directions but there's a difference between thoughts and thinking thinking is very structured thinking is very very logical it has reasoning it has some understanding behind it let me explain to you what is the difference between thoughts and thinking with the help of a story from the ramayan when hanuman ji left from the shore of the ocean to lanka he was very confident very enthusiastic and he was very excited about finding sita he landed in lanka search for sita length and breadth of lanka after many hours of searching for sita he just couldn't find her every nook and corner of the palace of ravan he searched every nook and corner of lanka he searched no matter how much he searched he just couldn't find sita at some point hanuman ji started getting despondent he was getting really sad frustrated and upset and and you can imagine if hanuman ji gets sad frustrated and upset what about you and me yeah. hanuman can achieve anything right if he also got sad frustrated and upset it is allowed to you know for all of us it's allowed we can get sad frustrated and upset but what happens after you get sad frustrated and upset differentiates you and hanuman ji i'm just going to give you some the uh, strain of thoughts that hanuman ji had this is what thoughts are okay so hanuman ji searched all over lanka then finally came and sat under a tree outside ravan's palace very sad very disappointed and he started having thoughts the first thought he had was what is the point in reaching lanka if i'm not able to find sita he says if i go back and tell the vanara army the people on the other side of the ocean that i have not found sita they will all die out of sadness and when the vanaras die out of sadness i go all the way back to kishkinda and report to lord ram saying that i have not found sita what will happen ram will die out of sadness separation from sita and if ram dies then lakshman will surely die he can't survive without ram and if lakshman and ram die then sugri will definitely die because he'll think that i gave a word to this person but i couldn't keep up my word so sugri will die and if sugri dies his wives will die and if his wives died angad the prince will die and if angad dies all the vanaras will die and if everybody in kishkinda dies then what is the point in me living pet started and where it ended this is what thoughts are after some time hanuman ji started thinking what am i doing this is not the way to think and then hanuman ji started doing what is called as thinking so till now what was happening thoughts were running in hanuman ji's mind and now hanuman ji decides to start thinking hanuman ji thinks all this time that i was searching for sita i was searching for sita based on my efforts i did not take shelter of prayers and sita is the goddess of fortune she is lakshmi herself isn't it so if sita sh- should be found if i should have darshan of sita what is needed it is important that sita wants to give darshan to me see when you come to the temple and you have darshan of radha gopinath don't think you want to have darshan therefore you are getting darshan the actual fact is that radha gopinath wants to give you darshan and therefore you are getting darshan isn't it so hanuman ji started thinking if sita wants to give me darshan then i can easily get her darshan but i have not offered a prayer is that from the time i landed in lanka i have not offered a single prayer 
I am only searching based on my effort. Let me now offer a prayer. Then he sits there and he closes his eyes and offers a very intense prayer. Praying to Ram, praying to Lakshman, praying to Mother Sita, praying to the gods and praying to his father Vayudev, praying to all the great personalities. And the moment he opens his eyes after that prayer, his, his eyes fall on Ashok Vatika. And he realizes, I have not looked here at all. I have searched everywhere else except Ashok Vatika. Now, look at the difference between thoughts and thinking. The difference between thoughts and thinking is, thoughts are unstructured. And thinking is very structured. Thoughts are usually going in the negative direction. It will take you into a downward spiral. And thinking takes you upwards. It's logical. It has reasoning behind it. There is some system in the way you think. And there is some reasoning behind the way you think. And that's why we have to start shifting from thoughts to thinking. So the next time you get a thought, remember Anumanji. And remember that thoughts are not going to help you. What is going to help you is thinking. And I am going to help you today in understanding how to move from thoughts to thinking. There is something known as paralysis by analysis syndrome. A lot of people think a lot and they think so much that they get stuck. The thinking doesn't go into doing. Your thinking should ideally transform into doing. Let me tell you a story. I tell many stories. Because stories keep a person alive. They prevent people from sleeping. And they convey the message better. There was once a centipede. You know what's a centipede? Centipede is an insect which has 100 legs. That's what I call centipede. So there was once a centipede who was an expert dancer. I mean, imagine if you have 100 legs, how you can dance, you know? This centipede was a super expert dancer. Every Bollywood song, he could masterfully dance. You know? So there was one ant observing the centipede dance. Now imagine the centipede comes to Hare Krishna Kirtan, you know, how much it will dance. You know? So this ant went to the centipede and asked a question. He said, I love your dancing, but I have one doubt. Can you please tell me, when you dance, do you put your hundredth leg in front of your second leg? Or do you put your fourth leg in front of your fifth leg? Exactly what is the sequence in which you dance? The centipede never thought like that. It only danced. It didn't use logic, you know, in how I am dancing and all that, you know. So the next time it began to dance, the centipede began to analyze a lot. How it's dancing. And guess what? He forgot only how to dance. <laughs> After that, he got so paralyzed, he never ever danced in his life. Many times, we just get stuck in these over analysis. Lord Ram, when he was sent to the forest, see, when bad things happen to you in your life, most people, they don't know how to process bad things. What could be worse than being kicked out of your own house? What could be worse than losing your own kingdom? What could be worse than becoming a beggar on this, in, in a forest, isn't it? One night, overnight, Ram lost everything. When he lost everything, Ram did not spend... If you study the Ramayana, in the 14 years of Ram being in exile, not even once, Ram asked, why this happened to me? Not even once. Not even once Ram asked, why this happened to me? Why am I only suffering? Never. He didn't even analyze why it happened to him. He just accepted it and he went ahead with it. And he decided to make the best use of those 14 years by studying from the sages. So, instead of getting paralyzed by over-analyzing everything that is happening to you in your life, I want to share with you Four strategies, how you can stop think overthinking. And these four very simple things in life will help you overcome this over-analysis, paralysis, and overthinking habit and become very powerful internally, very powerful mentally. 
So all of you are ready? I was just doing a prelude to the whole main discussion. So I, I, you know, this till now, this has just been like a trailer, what is to come. Now we'll start the main discussion by understanding these four things. We'll be discussing about declutter, stop worrying, be mentally strong, and fourth is called activate system two. I'll explain to you what all these things. Don't worry if you don't understand anything. You'll understand everything by the end of this. Let us first get into this discussion from the Ramayan between Ram and Mother Kaushalya. So when Ram um, was told that he has to go to the forest for 14 years, Ram, he came to his mother Kaushalya and he came and explained to her that he has to go to the forest for 14 years. So Kaushalya, she was waiting for Ram to come that day in the morning. Kaushalya prepared some very nice sweets and very nice items that were Ram's favorites. So Kaushalya prepared some very nice items that were Ram's favorite because she was waiting for Ram to come. This is the last meal Ram is going to have while he was in Ayodhya. And after this, Ram was going to go to the forest for 14 years. So now, obviously, Kaushalya didn't know this. Why did she prepare that last meal? Because for her, this was the last meal Ram is going to have as her son. After this, he is going to become the king of Ayodhya. And as a king, he can't eat like this. You know, it can't be an informal um, meal. So Kaushalya was preparing the best of items and waited for Ram to come and Ram came. But Ram came in a totally different mood. He comes to her and tells her that my dear mother, from now onwards, for the next 14 years, all I'm going to eat is kandamool, fruits and roots. And all I'm going to drink is honey and water. He took a vow in front of his mother. If anybody tells you all that Ram ate meat, all those stories are about Ram eating meat in the forest. But after taking a vow like this, Mariyada Purushottam Ram, you think he'll go and eat meat in the forest? Obviously not. This is the reference that you have to give. Anyone who tells you all that Ram ate meat, you can give a reference of this verse from the Varmika Ramayana and nobody can de debate this. So now, when Ram tells this to Kaushalya, she breaks down. She tells Ram, all my 25 years of austerities has gone vain. And she says, for 25 years, every single day I have been preparing for this day, when you will become the king of Ayodhya. All my fasts, Solinus Radhana Swami Maharaj ki. Thank you for being such a special part of our family. Shishi Radha Gopinath. Thank you, Shubha Balas Prabhu, for everything you're giving to all of us. May Sri Sri Radha Gopina shower their blessings, mercy, and grace on each of you and your loved ones. Thank you. Hare Krishna.
That was a very sweet break. <laughs> so, what was I saying? <laughs> yeah. So, Lord Ram took that vow in front of his mother. And then Mother Kaushalya was so heartbroken. She started talking about all her feelings. She said, I've been waiting for this day for the last 25 years. And I have lost count of how many fasts I've done. I've lost count of how many austerities I've undertaken. I've lost count of how many holy places I visited. I've lost count of how many brahmanas I've fed. All that is in vain. She says, I was always a neglected wife. And now I thought, I will finally have a son who is a king. And now even that is gone. Kaushalya, she was the first wife of Dasharat. But somehow Dasharat gave more attention to Kaikai. And Kaushalya always felt neglected. Instead of focusing on the neglect and for the lack of love, she started a Gurukul, where she was educating 10,000 students, giving them free education, free boarding, free lodging, and taking good care of them. But she had this one little hope. When Ram becomes a king, she will get respect, she will get attention, she will get love, she will become the queen mother. And suddenly even that is gone. So when she was so heartbroken, Ram tries to pacify her. He tells her, don't worry mother, for me this 14 years is just going to be like a long walk. I'll go and come back. Kaushalya is just not able to handle it. She asks Ram, did Dasharat actually tell you this? Was it Dasharat's instructions? Ram says, no. Then she says, if Dasharat has not given you direct instruction, then how is it your father's order? Ram tells her, my dear mother, what is more important than the, the than this word is the spirit behind the word. I know the spirit of my father. The spirit of my father is that I should go to the forest. It doesn't matter whether my father told me or somebody else told me, it doesn't matter. I understand what my father wants me to do and as a son, I'm going to do it. So Kaushalya tells him, I am your mother. I'm instructing you as a mother, don't go to the forest. If you're going to listen to your father's words, you should also listen to your mother's words. Ram tells her, yes, I will listen to your words. But I will listen to the words in the order in which they are given. First I will listen to my father's words for 14 years. Then I will come back and listen to your words. So like this. So like this, Ram uh, tells Mother Kaushalya. And in the middle of this, Lakshman is waiting there. Lakshman says, hell with all these discussions. I am going to use my bow and arrow and destroy the entire Ayodhya. And let's see who stops me. And he says, if I... So the first cause of mental clutter is daily stress. That means too much of physical clutter leads to a lot of mental clutter. The second is too many choices. In today's world, how many choices are there? You have to buy one phone. What a headache it is, isn't it? To choose which phone to buy. I mean, it really stresses your mind out so badly. You want to buy a one earphone. You spend half an hour trying to choose which earphone to buy. Just one little thing you want to buy, you have 100 things, 100 choices. The mind goes crazy, isn't it? The way we consume information today, you, most people, just try this exercise. You are scrolling your reels for one hour. After one hour, ask yourself, how much do you remember? <laughs> do you remember anything? Anything at all? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So much of information going into your mind, but no use. Isn't it? Learn to filter your information. If you really want to be mentally sorted, learn to filter your information. One tip I'll give you all. If you want to get rid of Instagram addiction, remove it from your phone and put it on your laptop. 
half your problem will get solved there only <laughs> practical solution <laughs> so learn to filter out how much goes inside don't just take anything inside okay and the most important thing is negativity bias learn not to be stuck with too much negativity there might be a lot of negativity around you but don't focus on that focus on the gaps in between so the way to declutter is first take meditation seriously japa is a very powerful way to declutter your mind you know what japa does japa gives you practice to pull your mind away from distractions and focus on something that is useful when you sit to chant what happens mind runs right your mind runs here and there and what do you do you pull the mind back and focus on the holy name so every day morning if you practice for 2 hours pulling your mind back and focusing on the holy name all day long you'll be able to do the same thing pull your mind and focus on what is important for you so 2 hours in the morning we practice pulling the mind and focusing on what is important and those 2 hours of practice helps you across the day the second thing is refrain from negative thoughts and third thing is retain positive thoughts these are three things that you can learn from this one little behavior of lord ram in the ramayan there is a very interesting um story where lakshman teaches ram a lesson usually throughout the ramayan ram is the one who is inspiring lakshman ram is the one who is you know uh, telling lakshman what is right and what is wrong but in this one section of the ramayan you will find lakshman giving some very in interesting instructions to ram this is a section when sita gets kidnapped by ravan and ram goes completely mad he is running around like a crazy man crying shouting out the name of sita and is in a very intense phase he is talking to deers he is talking to uh, you know the birds he is talking to the trees he is talking to the rivers he is asking everyone where is sita where is sita where is sita and all these animals they are also so helpless they crying tears they trying to you know show ram direction with their with their faces and all that but ram has no idea where sita is and finally he completely loses his mind and he decides to do something terrible you know what ram does ram takes a bow and arrow and he decides to destroy the universe he takes the brahmastra and he is going to destroy the entire universe because he's asking the mountains where is sita if you don't answer i'll destroy you the mountain doesn't answer and he gets completely mad he's he's about to shoot the brahmastra that time lakshman comes in and gives ram some amazing insights lakshman tells ram my dear ram i am giving you four reasons why you should not take such a rash action and lakshman tells ram the first reason is at a personal level he says the greatness of a person has to be perpetual that means you will find great people are great always the sun is always splendor splendorous the moon is always soothing everything is very very perfect and precise similarly great people even in the middle of calamities they don't lose hope you are a great person you are a mahanubhav please behave like a mahanubhav even when you are in difficulty first reason and then second he says the second reason is at a philosophical level he says duality is a second nature of this world in this world wherever there is happiness there will be distress and wherever there is distress there there will be happiness the nature of this world it, it will always keep you guessing so he tells ram don't worry nothing in this world is permanent including misery have you ever been permanently miserable you become happy also right have you ever been permanently happy you become miserable also right so everyone goes through ups and downs the third thing lakshman tells ram is at a logical level he says if you use logic and you look around 
all the footprints that are there on the ground, you will find that there's only one person who has done this job of kidnapping Sita. If only one person has done this job of kidnapping Sita, why are you punishing the whole world? What logic is there in punishing the whole world? Find that person and punish him. Don't show your anger on everybody else. And the fourth reason Lakshman tells Ram is the level of, level, level of leaving a legacy for the future. Great men, their actions and words become reference points for the future. If you don't de deal with your calamity properly, in future when people read the Ramayana, what will people learn from your actions? They will not be inspired. They will break down when they go through calamities personally in their lives. So you have to teach by your actions how to deal with calamity when you face it. When Ram hears these four things, he comes down. And he actually starts focusing and dealing with the problem in a very, very practical way. This is the second step to deal with overthinking. So the first step I said is declutter. The second step is stop worrying. Worry is a cycle. Worry is like a rocking chair. If you sit on a rocking chair, you keep moving, but it takes you nowhere, right? You keep moving for one hour. Can you go somewhere? You'll reach somewhere in one hour? No, you'll remain there only. So worrying is like a rocking chair. Keep thinking, keep thinking, keep thinking, keep thinking. You don't go anywhere. You stay there only, basically. There was once a... Um, an evil monster that tormented the village. So this monster was living in a forest. And every time the villagers went to the forest, or they were passing by the forest, they would come across this monster and this monster would destroy these guys. People in the village were very disturbed by this monster. And they all decided to go together to destroy the monster. There was one little boy who heard this whole thing and he said, can you tell me what happened? He said, this monster is destroying all of us. One fellow went to the forest. He was passing by to the next village. And he saw this monster. And he removed his sword. The monster removed a huge, bigger sword and cut him to pieces. Another man, he went with a huge stick of fire. And he went to burn this monster. And the monster spitted fire from his mouth and burned this fellow. So now these people were really worried they were thinking that the monster, monster is going to come into the village and destroy all of us. They decided to all go together and destroy the monster. The little boy said, can you give me some time? Let me try to deal with this monster. All the villagers warned this boy. They said, no, no, don't take any risk. This is very dangerous. The little boy went directly to the monster. And he held out his hand like this. And the little boy in his hand, he had small hands. He had one apple in the hand. The monster took that apple and he held out his hand and in his hand there were 100 apples. And the boy smiled and the monster smiled. And that's when they realized the monster is doing whatever you are doing for it. If you take a sword, the monster will kill you. If you take fire, the monster will burn you. But if you smile, the monster will smile back. If you give it love, the monster will give you love back. Similarly, all these, all our problems, all our worries, all our difficulties in life, the way they appear is based on how you look at it. If you look at it as dangerous, they will appear dangerous. If you look at it as threatening, the problem will appear threatening to you. But if you look at it as an opportunity, the problem will also appear like an opportunity to you. If you look at it as a challenge, the problem will appear as a challenge to you. So instead of being worried by the problems, instead of being disappointed by the problems, instead of being disturbed by the problems, stop looking at them as problems and start looking at them in a more simpler and in a more happier way. And the most amazing thing is that all of us will have problems in life. But the way all of us deal with the problems is different. In fact, if two people have the exact same problem, they can deal with it in two different ways. And that's why 
The problem is like the monster. The behavior of the monster depends on your behavior towards it. If you behave nicely, the problem will behave nicely with you. If you behave very badly, the problem also will behave very badly with you. And therefore, instead of keeping on worrying so much, start looking at worry in very simple ways. I'm going to give you all some very five simple tips how you can stop worrying in your life. First thing, I don't think anybody in your life would have told you this, but I'm going to tell you this. It's a very important thing to remember. Please sleep well. And I'm telling you, as a psychologist, I'm telling you, I've studied psychology and I can, I've dealt with hundreds of people in life. And I can tell you one thing for sure. The most common thing between lot of people that have a lot of worry in their life, the most common thing is that they don't sleep well. You, you, you come to me with a problem, the first thing I'll ask you is whether you have slept properly or not. And 90% of the people who, have prob who, who are having problems they're not able to deal with, they don't sleep properly. So first thing, my first advice to you all to stop worrying is, start sleeping well. Now, some of you might tell me, that is not a problem at all for me, you know. <laughs> there are some people who are like Kumbhakaran, na. 22 hours you can sleep straight, you know. I'm not talking about such people. They have a different set of problem only, you know. <laughs> I'm talking about normal people. <laughs> so most people, when they get very worried, the first thing that gets destroyed is sleep. And the other way around also is same. If you don't sleep well, you're, you will have more tendency to worry. First thing, start ensuring that you get every day six to seven hours of good quality sleep. Half your problems will get solved there only. The second thing that I would like to tell you all is keep yourself busy. Forget your worries. Keep yourself busy. There was once a man who went to a saint and he told the saint that um, I have a lot of problems in life. He said, um, my job is a problem, my boss is a problem, my wife is a problem, my children very troublesome, my health is very bad, I have bank loans, though. these guys keep troubling me for EMI. He went on and on telling all the problems in his life. The saint told him, we'll talk about it tomorrow morning, I'll give you a solution. But tonight, can you do something for me? This man said, yes, I'll do anything for you. Please help me solve my problems. The saint, he had, he lived in a desert and he had a hundred camels. The saint told this man, can you just go to my camel shed and make all my camels sit down and then he can go and sleep. He said, yes, no problem, I'll do it. The saint went back to his room and this man went to the camel shed. The next day morning, the saint came and he asked this man, so how did he sleep? He said, what? I never slept for a moment. The saint said, why? Why didn't you sleep? He said, all night I was making this camel sit down. He said, your hundred camels, you're not sitting only. When one camel sits, another camel stands up. <laughs> and I'm trying to make one fellow sit down, he's not sitting only. And another camel, without telling only, he's sitting down. He said, there was no point throughout the night when all the hundred camels were sitting down. He said, therefore, I couldn't sleep. The saint said, problems in life are like these camels. If you try to make a problem sit, it will stand. And in life, there will always be some problem sitting, some problem standing. You cannot ever have a point in time in life where all problems are sitting. That will never happen only. That's why our graph of life is like this, right? When it is like this, then no problems are there. <laughs> then you are dead. <laughs> That's the only time when there will be no problems. But otherwise, there will always be problems, ups and downs, ups and downs, and ups and downs. We have to learn to just deal with them as they come. Don't get stressed out of them. Keep busy in your life and let the problems deal by themselves. 
the third thing is that you have to remember that you have more power than you think you have so most people think that we don't have power to deal with our problems in life the fact is that if god has given you a problem that means he knows that you have the ability to deal with the problem in fact when you face your problems your problems actually become smaller but when you don't face them the problems appear bigger there's once a very interesting story it's not in the bhagavad but it's a very interesting story about krishna balaram one time krishna and balaram they were um, passing by a forest going to another destination and on the way they had to stop in the forest for the night so krishna balaram they decided that uh, each one of them will guard the other so one will sleep for some time another will guard and then they, the other person will get up and so first krishna went to sleep and balaram was guarding he was walking up and down and there was a huge monster that came and this monster was looking so ghastly the balram got scared he shouted out ah and the moment balram screamed the monster became bigger and balram became smaller and then the monster came closer and balram again shouted out a second time the monster became even bigger and balram became even smaller and finally the third time balram shouted out krishna and he fainted krishna got up think, hearing balram's voice and of course the monster had become normal by that time it had disappeared and then krishna was guarding balram he was walking around then the monster came out to scare krishna and the monster came and started shouting at krishna to scare him krishna looked at the monster and he asked him what do you want <laughs> the monster got so confused and the moment the monster got confused the monster became smaller and krishna became bigger and the monster again tried to scream to scare krishna and krishna again asked him what do you want and the monster became even smaller and krishna became even bigger and finally a third time the monster shouted with all its force and krishna asked him what do you want and the monster became so small krishna picked it up tied it in its dhoti and went to sleep <laughs> the next day morning krishna balaram they were going on their way to dwarak uh, dwarka Balram told Krishna Krishna do you know what happened yesterday night there was a huge monster that came and scared me i got so scared of the monster Krishna removed the monster from his dhoti and showed him he said this fellow Balram said how did he become so small he was so huge yesterday and through the mouth of Krishna we can hear a very inter- interesting instruction on how to deal with problems in life problems in life are like this monster you get scared of it it becomes bigger you get more scared of it it becomes even bigger you get more scared of it it becomes even bigger but if you simply ask it what do you want you learn to face it the problem is not so big actually most of the problems in our life are not so big actually it's just that we are scared to face them the more we are scared to face them the bigger they appear the more we are happy and we are bold enough courage is enough to face them it's not so big actually no problem in this world is actually so big if you learn to face them simply face them and then the problem starts actually becoming smaller and you become bigger the fourth thing is that don't have impossible wishes don't wish for impossible things if you start thinking that i want a rolls royce first year of my career come on yeah be practical don't think about impossible things i mean eventually you might you might achieve it but start with practical things in mind people read the secret and all these books and they suddenly start developing some strange you know ideas of what positive thinking is and you know be practical be on the ground don't think about impossible things because those impossible things get you more worried and especially today in days of youtube and instagram fame oh my god how many youngsters are there today who are going crazy trying to earn like many of these youtubers and instagramers it's not always the same for everybody the journey is different for everyone 
be practical be grounded and work hard and finally the last thing is stop worrying about what others think stop worrying about what others think about you the reality is nobody is bothered about you we always think you know if i wear this kind of dress what will others think are nobody has time to look at you only because they are all looking at themselves you know people think if i have this type of hairstyle what will people think nobody cares what hairstyle you have nobody cares what you wear nobody cares for anything because they all bothered about their own lives don't be so much bothered about what others think if you really want to be bothered about someone be bothered about what your parents think that's the most important people in your life that you should really be bothered about pleasing be bothered about what your guru your teachers really want you to do if you really want to please someone please them because they really care for you other than that nobody else really cares for you in your life don't be so much bogged down to please those people that don't care a damn for you i'm going to share with you all a very interesting uh, comparison in the between the ramayana and the mahabharat here are two people karna and sumantra the common thing between the two of them is that they both were born in a chariot family chariot drivers family sumantra and karna both were sutas right karna's father was adiratha he was a chariot driver of the kuru dynasty and sumantra's father also was a chariot driver and eventually he became a chariot driver dasharat maharaj but it's very interesting how these two people they looked at their life sumantra was a chariot driver but he became a prime minister of the country and after becoming the prime minister of the country he still continued driving chariot have you ever seen chai wala becoming prime minister and still continuing selling chai you know <laughs> that won't happen today but look at ayodhya this is another level only he became prime minister but he continued driving chariot isn't that amazing i mean how can someone who is having such a huge portfolio still perform such a humble role this is the difference between karna and sumantra what is the difference the difference is in the attitude so karna he was he constantly was complaining but what he didn't have in life if you study karna's life the entire mahabharat is all about complaining of what i lost what i don't have isn't it sumantra he was same family but he never complained what he did he worked on himself he never complained he was very grateful for what he had and from what he had he started achieving more karna lived a life of separated ambition then he was only bothered about his own ambition he was not bothered about the kingdom he was not bothered about people he was not bothered about whom he was serving he was only bothered about his own ambitions but sumantra he lived a life of integration he was bothered about society he was bothered about serving people he was bothered about serving doing his responsibilities sumantra valued knowledge karna valued growth sumantra valued internal development and karna valued external development he was not bothered about inside he lied so many times karna in his life he cheated so many times why simply because he wanted something and he was ready to compromise break all codes of ethics to achieve what he wanted to achieve right and sumantra was bothered about focused on contribution and karna was focused on fame those who focus on fame they may achieve fame but their fame is short lived but those who focus on contribution their fame is much longer is much longer lived uh, sumantra fo- focused on genuine relationships karna focused on superficial relationships all the people he developed relationships was because he can achieve something from them through them he didn't have deep connections with anybody including duryodhan i mean the proof is that on the day the war was going to begin the most important war of duryodhan's life this fellow took a vow that he will not fight in the war as long as bhishma is alive bhishma was alive for 10 days or the 18 days of war and karna didn't step in so that means he didn't even bother about his relationship with duryodhan he was only bothered about himself and so he was uh, developing friendship based on gain 
So from these two people, we can learn something very important. The idea of mental strength. Mental strength is your ability to regulate your emotions, manage your thoughts and behave positively in spite of all the, uh, you know, uh, the pressures and situations in which you are. I'm going to give you all some very simple thoughts that will help you understand what mental um, strength is. There was once a professor that came into a classroom and he told the students there was a glass of water and he asked them, he lifted the glass of water and he said, how much does this glass weigh filled with water? So they said 200 grams and he said, are you sure it weighs 200 grams? They said, yes, yes, 100 percent it weighs 200 grams. He said, if you hold this glass in your hand for 24 hours, how much will the glass weigh? Will it still weigh 200 grams? Of course, it will weigh 200 grams only. But something else will happen to your hand, right? If you hold that glass for 7 days, 24 hours, what will happen to your hand? Is the weight of the glass going to change? The weight of the glass is not going to change. Same weight, 200 grams only. But now the 200 grams will feel like a mountain in your hand. Isn't it? The, glass of the, the weight of the glass has remained same, but its pressure on you will increase with time. That's exactly how mind works. If you hold a thought in your mind, if you hold a problem in your mind, if you hold a, 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 a situation in your mind for a long period of time, it might be a very small thing. But if you hold it for too long, that very tiny thing appears so heavy. It appears so heavy. There are some people who love to talk about their problems hundreds of times. You know what happened to me today? And they'll start full story, you know. And then 10 minutes later, somebody else comes. And you know what happened to me today? Full story again, you know. <laughs> what capacity they have to hold the problem in their mind? And like this, by telling again and again and again, what are you doing? You're strengthening it. You're giving it so much weight. You're giving it so much of importance. And that's what causes so much of strain in your mind. So I'm going to share with you all some very simple steps to maintain mental strength. The first step is stop feeling sorry for yourself. First thing, stop feeling sorry for yourself. Let me tell you a story. There was once a mosquito who went to God and he complained to God. He said, God, you have given us so much, but why did you create the wind? What, what problems people have see, huh? God said, what? What are you saying? He's saying, mosquito is saying, I'm sitting on this man and sucking his blood so nicely. You've given me such beautiful tentlers and such, you know, uh, um, such light weight. I can suck as much blood as possible and the fellow doesn't even come to know. But my biggest enemy is the wind. The moment the wind blows, we just get thrown away so far away from our targets. Can you just take this wind away from our life, you know? God is looking at him and he said, why don't you go and talk to the other insects? Maybe they'll give you some ideas how they deal with the problem. So the mosquito went to the other insects and he spoke to the bug, he spoke to the flies. And the bug said, you have no idea what problem I am having in my life. He said, at least you have wings, you can fly away. But we sit on human beings and suck their blood. But when they find us out, they crush us. <laughs> they you know, pulverize us. We can't even fly away. Look at our problem. We are always hoping someday we will be develop wings like the mosquito. And then the mosquito looks at the fly. And the fly says, you have no idea what our problem is. At least you fly away fast. We are, our body is so heavy and our wings are so light. Before we fly away, these, these uh, human beings hit us and we, we fall down and we become unconscious for long hours. 
and we said we are cursing our weight we want to be light like you the mosquito suddenly the mosquito realized i don't have any problem only in life <laughs> complaining is very easy but appreciating what we have is very difficult when an immature mind focuses on a problem it complains but life is so huge life is so big you can decide to focus on so many aspects of life why do you need to focus on only one aspect of life that is that is missing and for most people what is missing in their life is gratitude gratitude for what they have karna lived his entire life complaining about what he didn't have sumantra lived his entire life being grateful for what he had and therefore you will see the result sumantra is glorified in the ramayan and karna is not exactly glorified in the mahabharat and so many people try to defend karna without understanding the wrong attitude that he had so we simply have to understand that if we want to be mentally strong let us stop feeling pity on ourselves whatever we are let us be grateful for it whatever we have let us be grateful for it and whatever we don't have also let us be grateful for it stop feeling self pity the second thing is take control of your life there are many people who are there to control your life i'm sure all of you all have somebody who's trying to control your life right it might be a friend it might be a girlfriend it might be in future you will have a spouse you will have boss you will have so many people you will have colleagues you will have so many people who are trying to control your life learn to keep control of your life in your own hand when you give your power to somebody else they can make you do things that you don't want to do i remember still i was finishing my 12th standard and then we were getting into engineering or we were supposed to choose our fields and you know we went into these you know there was a board uh, of examiners whatever that was called huh counselors. counselors whatever so you had to go in and select a field and come out your entire future rested in few seconds what happens inside you know and you know typically how most people chose their fields before them the friend who went in and he came out whatever that fellow chose this fellow chose without thinking only few seconds what do you think isn't it so in india at least this is how it happens first we do engineering and then figure out what we want to do in life this is called peer pressure <laughs> in the ramayana there is a very interesting story of a king named ashwapati and this story is told by sumantra to kaikai and dasharath maharaj kaikai's father was named ashwapati and he had a very interesting boon the boon that he had was he could understand the language of animals when animals spoke to each other ashwapati could understand it nowadays when humans speak to each other also you can understand you know he so long understood language of animals so one day he was eating his dinner and his wife was sitting next to him so he saw two ants speaking to each other and they were speaking something hilarious i mean if ants speak what will they speak right like there were two ants walking on the street and there was a huge elephant coming that said so one ant is telling the other ant let us both beat this fellow up <laughs> the other ant tells him no no let it be we are two he is alone leave him <laughs> imagine if you get to hear insects speaking to each other you know it's so hilarious right so this ashwapati heard these two ants speaking to each other and he was laughing like anything his wife asked him why are you laughing he said i heard these two ants speak to each other it was really funny the wife said tell me what they were speaking ashwapati said see i can't tell you because the boon is that if i tell someone what i have heard i will die she said no problem die but tell me and die 
Now imagine, this is like height of bullying, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Sumantra tells this story to Kaikai and tells her, you are like your mother only. You're bullying Dasharat to do something he doesn't want to do. You're bullying an entire country to do what you want. And you're disturbing so many people's lives. So mental strength is to learn to have control over your life. Don't give the remote control of your life to somebody else. If somebody presses a button, you cry. If somebody presses another button, you laugh. Why should you give a remote control of your life to someone else? You should have charge of your life. It doesn't mean that you don't take advice. You can take advice, you can take feedback. But don't allow other people to control your life. The third thing is, accept change. Change is a part of life. It's going to happen. There is a lot of changes that are going to happen in your life. At this point in your life, you are in the peak of your youth. But don't think changes won't happen in your life. At every stage in your life, there will be changes. And at every stage in your life, you have to learn to be flexible, to be able to adopt to those changes and to thrive in those changes. And finally, the last thing that I would like to advise you all, please take this advice very seriously. Every single day, spend some time alone. When I'm saying alone, not with your mobile phone. <laughs> being with your mobile phone is not being alone. It is being hounded by 100 people, right? Spend every day some time alone. There is a lot of power in spending time with yourself. Lord Ram tells Bharat, in fact, he tells him, Every leader should spend the first half of the day, first few, first half of the day, he's talking about early morning, Brahma Murtha time, you know, early morning hours. Every leader should spend some time alone, contemplating of what he has done the previous day and planning for the, for the, uh, the next day. So this is the most powerful thing you can do for yourself. Spending some time alone with yourself, you can do meditation, you can do japa, you can offer prayers, you can read some prayers, you can read some books, spend some time every single day alone in developing your mental strength. And it'll, it'll go a long way in assisting you in developing yourself. Finally, the last story that I'm going to spare, uh, share with you all is a story of Mantra and Kai Kai. There's a difference between Mantra and Sumantra. There are two personalities in the Ramayana. Mantra and Sumantra. What is the difference? The word Su. What is the meaning of the word Su? Su means good. Mantra means churning. Right? Manthan. Manthan means churning, right? So, what does she churn? She churns her intelligence and brings out ideas. But Mantra, which doesn't have the Su, those ideas are dangerous ideas. And, the, and Sumantra, with the word Su, his ideas are good ideas. All of us sitting here, we are either Mantra or Sumantra. Mostly, we are Mantra only. Because all our ideas are destructive. For ourselves also and for others also. Mantra had such fantastic ideas. She gave Kai Kai such solutions that Kai Kai never even thought as possible. Mantra and Kai Kai's conversation is one of the most powerful conversations in the entire Ramayana. Someday if you get a chance, you should read the entire conversation between Mantra and, Suma and Kai Kai. It shows how intelligent Mantra was. But she was using the intelligence for the wrong purpose. So Mantra, she tells Kai Kai about why Ram should go to the forest for 14 years and why Bharat should become the king. And such a strongly convincing way that Kai Kai tells her, I am now convinced that you are so intelligent that your hunchback is not a hunchback. It is a pot full of ideas. <laughs> in fact, all the problems in Ayodhya solution is there in your hunchback only, you know. Imagine how much she is able to convince, you know, Kai Kai in those few hours of conversation. Kai was so impressed. And therefore, 
Mantra represents that person who is an overthinker, but uses the overthinker to divide people, to destroy an organization, to destroy a, a family, destroy a country. Very intelligent person, but using intelligence in the wrong direction. And Sumantra was using all his intelligence in uniting people, in you know, growing the organization, growing the country. All of us, we have two choices. We have what is called system one, and we have something called system two. System one is mantra, and system two is sumantra. System one is snap judgments. <clears throat> that means you make decisions quickly based on somebody. Somebody said it. Thoughts. Based on thoughts. That's what system one does. And system two is based on thinking. The difference between thoughts and thinking is the difference between mantra and sumantra. Mantra gives you so many thoughts. So every time your mind throws so many thoughts at you, remember mantra. And every time your intelligence throws a thinking pattern, a way to logically decipher things, Remember Sumantra. And I'm going to tell you a fantastic story now, which will be the grand finale of today's session. It's a very funny story and one of my favorite stories. One time, there was a little pig that went to a lake to drink water. This little piggy was drinking water from the lake. And as this little piggy was drinking water from the lake, suddenly a huge tiger came and stood next to it and began to drink water. Imagine a tiger stands next to you, you know. So this piggy started shivering, literally shivering. The tiger didn't even look at the piggy, kept drinking water. After he finished drinking water, the tiger left. As the tiger was leaving, this piggy suddenly had some thoughts. This is how thoughts work. This piggy started having these thoughts. I think. The tiger is scared of me. <laughs> Why did he not even look at me? That means he's really scared of me. Maybe it's time to declare that I'm the king of the jungle. <laughs> and his piggy shouted out, Hey tiger, look at me. That's when the tiger noticed the piggy. <laughs> Till this time he didn't even see the piggy, he was so small. you know. The piggy said, are you scared of me? The tiger, he was like, felt like laughing, you know. The tiger just had a heavy meal and is not interested in eating anymore. <laughs> this piggy, he got even more convinced. His thoughts were like going in all different directions, you know. He said, come and fight with me. If you have guts, come and fight with me. The tiger, you know, he didn't want to waste his time over. He said, tomorrow, come back, same time, same place. And then I'll fight with you. <laughs> the tiger went away. This piggy's thoughts are going to another level only. On the way home, he's declaring to everybody in the jungle, I am the new king of the jungle now, you know. And with great overconfidence, he reached home. And he told his father and grandfather and mother and all his brothers the story of how I have become the new king of the jungle. The father and mother and grandfather, they realized this guy is in big trouble. They told him that when a tiger is full, the tiger doesn't eat anymore. He has called you tomorrow because tomorrow he'll be hungry and then he'll eat you. Yeah. <laughs> That's when the piggy realized the reality. And he started shivering. He said, please save me, please save me. Yeah. And the grandfather pig gave him a very good idea. He said, do exactly what I tell you and you will be saved. The next day morning, this piggy he went to the lake. On the way to the lake, he rolled in all the dung that he could get. He rolled in wild boar dung, he rolled in elephant dung, he rolled in all the gutter water, every single stinking thing on the way he rolled in it and went and reached the lake. The tiger reached. The tiger smelled the piggy. He said, Jai Shri Shri Radha Gopinath Bhagavan Ki. So the tiger tells the piggy,
So the tiger looks at the piggy and tells him, he said, yucks, what have you done to yourself? Why are you stinking so badly? The piggy smiled and looked at the tiger. And the tiger said, get lost from here. I don't even want to see you. And the piggy ran back home. And from that time onwards, all the pigs have decided that the best way to save themselves is roll in all the gutter and all the dung. <laughs> now, let us look at this story from System 1, System 2. The first part of the story was System 1 in action, right? Wild thoughts. Wild thoughts that have no logic, no reason, and no intelligence in them, right? All of us, we have all experienced these wild thoughts, isn't it? And I'm sure your wild thoughts can take you to another level of madness, isn't it? And some of the thoughts that we have have no logic only in it. Half the fears that we have have no logic in them. They're just unreasonable things. But that's the way the mind is. That's the way the system is. Snap judgments. Just quickly, you take this, you know, you 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 uh, you have these thoughts coming, and they build over one another. But system two is a more logical way of approaching problems in life, which is what the grandfather pig helped the little piggy. It's a more rational, it's a more logical, it's a more very very uh, strongly thinking way of looking at solutions in life. That's called system two. So therefore the most important thing that all of us need to do is activate system 2. What is the meaning of activate system 2? If you come across a situation in your life that is causing you to worry, that causing you to overthink, stop. And instead of letting your thoughts go wild, start looking reasoningly, logically, with rationality. And you'll start realizing there is a very systematic pattern in which you can deal with the problem and you actually find simple solutions in life. Just to summarize everything we spoke, we spoke about first declutter. I said the mental clutter affects the physical clutter and the physical clutter affects the mental clutter. Learn to have minimum. And we spoke about so many stories. We spoke about the story of Hanumanji and his way of dealing with so much of the clutter that, we, that he had. Then we spoke about stop worrying. And we st we st uh, here we spoke about many ways in which you can stop worrying. And we spoke about the story of the camel and the saint and so many other things. Um, and here we spoke about uh, specifically Kaushalya and Lord Ram's conversation, how Ram helped Kaushalya deal with his, her worries. And then we spoke about being mentally strong. And uh, in this, again, I gave you all so many thoughts on how to deal with self-pity and so many things. And finally, the last thing I spoke about is Activate System 2, where you need to take charge of your thinking and not allow your thoughts to take over your life. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. So, uh, thank you Shubhilas Puru. It was a wonderful uh, treat for all of us. And we wish that we continue on hearing you. And the good thing for all of us is, he has given many lectures and all are available on YouTube. So now, we got that this treasure. So let's relish it and, you know, uh, empower us and uh, nourish us towards Krishna consciousness. Now we have some time here, 10 to 15 minutes. If you have some good questions, you can raise your hand and we'll send you the mic and there, there can be question and answer session. Yeah. Hello. Uh, so, so I, actually the question is not, I just want to thank you uh, because currently I'm reading the, the series Ramayana, the game of life. So I really thanks a lot for that wonderful series. Currently I'm on the second book that is a conquer change. And I'm on the verge of finishing it. So I highly recommend each and everyone sitting out here since we all are male. So like I have, you have mentioned it, like Ram, Ram to the incarnation to set a benchmark for all the males to follow. So I personally feel if you want to be a good perfect man, man then just follow Ram. And just, and just to know what he is. So Ram and the Game of Life is a wonderful series. So I recommend everyone to read it. 
and thanks a lot, sir, for for that series. So I'm just by reading that first two books, I feel I've learned so much. So still four more to go. So let's see how it goes on. Thanks a lot. The good news for all of you is, when you go down, there is a there are the books written by Shubhilas Pro. They are at discounted price, and Pooja is agreed to kindly sign the books. So please take advantage of that. Okay, Hare Krishna. Anyone else has question? Ha, piche, piche udar do tin haate, piche bhej dijiye. Let put it on. On karna hai. Yeah, Prabhuji. So, I have a question specifically for the declutter part. So, as you said that we have to be organized and when, uh, so our table should be clean. So, it also means that my mind is also well organized. So, what happens most of the time, my father, whenever I visit his office, so uh, every folder, file, uh, they are on table. And the reason he keep on the table is that uh, he wants to be very quick. So whenever, if you want to check certain price of a product, so this should be very handy. So, uh, like, what, what should I t uh, to tell, like, my parents to be well organized? See, keeping it on the table is not a problem. Hmm. But keeping it organized on the table is important. See, when I'm saying to uh, be clutter free, to, to declutter, what I mean is everything in place and a place for everything. That should be the motto. Like say for example, you go back to your home, you have a bike key or a car key, throw it here. When you throw it, how much time does it take? One second, right? And if you hang it somewhere, how much does time does it take? One second. But afterwards, when you search for it, when you have thrown it here and there, it takes much longer to search for it, right? I know families where the whole family is searching for one key. Nobody has any idea where that key is going, isn't it? Yeah. So much time gets wasted because it's unorganized. And uh, my mother is completely opposite. So in the hall, whenever I bought something, I, I keep it in the hall so that uh, it should be in front of my eyes. But my mother, she wants the hall to be clean. So what she does, she, ta she takes the product and she keeps somewhere. And then when I ask, where is this product? She says that, uh, I forgot. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> you, you start getting organized yourself first. Yeah. And then you, that will be a good example for others. Thank right? you. Thanks for answering. Yeah. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Prabhuji, you said that uh, first you need to take, take uh, six to seven hours of sleep. But what if the sleep only is the problem? Excess sleeping. Excess sleeping. <laughs> Come for Mangalarti here. <laughs> See, basically, the most important thing that you really need to understand if you really want to evolve spiritually is to get up early morning. So, spiritual life and Late morning getting up doesn't work together. If you're interested in spiritual life, you have to learn to get up early. And if you have to get up early, you have to sleep early also. It's all interconnected with each other. So you should take some vows of chanting certain number of rounds, getting up at a particular time. So these, these disciplines are very important for our spiritual growth. So if you're really interested in spiritual life, and also in your academics and your profession, basically, you have to bring in discipline in your life. Nobody can grow without discipline. You cannot achieve much in your life if you don't have discipline. So you have to force yourself. See, look at it this way. There is something known as pain of regret. And then there is something known as pain of discipline. Both have pain. Pain of discipline means what? Right now, I have to get up early in the morning. It's a lot of pain, right? It's called pain of discipline. But if I don't do this, 
then much later you will go through another pain which is called pain of regret so those who have a comfortable life now they go through pain later those who have a little painful life now they go through a lot of comfort later so you have to decide what you want so we recommend pain of discipline rather than pain of regret okay thank you prabhu ji thank you hare krishna so i have a question that uh, right now you told us so many methods and techniques how to declutter the mind but the thing is that when the actual problem occurs all these uh, methods don't flash in the mind what flashes is the uh, overthinking and the cy cyclical thought pattern so what to do in that point of time so that we can uh, tackle it eff effectively and the second thing is that in uh, patanjali's yoga sutras they talk about yamas and niyamas and so how important do you think all these things are and how important is the diet for the uh, proper working of the mind so okay. so i'll answer your first question first see when you learn something new you can't learn it immediately right just like when you are studying a subject like say chemistry or maths or anything any subject you hear it first time from the class teacher or from your professors do you remember everything you don't you learn it you hear it from them and then you sit at home and you read it yourself you hear it again yourself right and multiple times you revise and then it remains in you correct yes similarly any education that you get when you come to a temple you hear a lecture when you walk out you will not remember everything you go back and revise this lecture is live on youtube you can go back and hear it again make notes that's why I, right in the beginning i told you all make notes you remember i the reason i told you all to make notes because you can't remember everything but when you write it down whatever you write down you remember and more than writing down after you write down share it with somebody else then you retain that more so three steps here that means here again the same lecture make notes share these three steps you will retain maximum amount of information and then that information will be useful to you so it, this is in technical words it is called shravanam mananam nididhyasanam shravanam is hearing mananam is contemplation revising what you have heard and nididhyasanam is applying what you have heard and then fourth is shra, uh, sharing kirtanam basically so these four steps you will actually retain maximum information as far as yam niyam and uh, asanas and all that is concerned absolutely what we are teaching in bhakti yoga in uh, in, in iskon temples is the same thing we are teaching you niyam we are teaching you yam we are teaching you uh, so many of the aspects of uh, yoga sutras but it is in a bhakti mai way this is a bhakti yoga style basically so the same principles of yoga apply here also but they are more conducive for kali yoga so practicing the yoga sutras taught by patanjali in kali yoga is not easy for everybody right yeah. but uh, when you practice bhakti yoga it's the same principles are taught in a much easier to apply way and a easier to practice way okay, okay. thank you thank sir you. thank you uh, hari krishna prabhu ji uh hari krishna uh first of all uh like i want to thank you by krishna's grace you answered most means question of my life i just have a small doubt like as i am preparing for now je so uh the mindset that i go from the two years is like don't let the problem go unless and until it is solved so like i just have a small doubt here like if i am getting the problems in the life and uh if it is able to solve so should i work on that problem means uh, at certain point i feel that the problem is uh, not solvable but should i try on that means as you mentioned one point you should sometimes let the problem go yeah see basically there is a difference between iit je problems and life problems so you know i i deal with technical people all the time you know so i understand how they think so because they think they can solve all technical problems they think they can solve all life problems also that's not how the real world works you tell people like when you have a problem with in say for example in a relationship you tells like if you 
uh, have a social media relationship. You can mute a person, you can block a person, you can do so many things to a person, right? But if you have a person in real life and you tell them, try to mute that person, he'll speak more. <laughs> Isn't it? So whenever you come across real life problems, learn to deal with it with, not with talent, but with attitude. Good attitude is more important than talent. Talent can help you solve all your technical problems in life. But good attitude helps you solve your life problems. So along with developing talent in your life, also parallelly develop good attitude. And that will help you solve more problems than what talent can ever help you solve. Okay? One last question. Yeah. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Prabhuji, when I sit to study, I get distracted by thoughts. How to avoid thoughts? How to avoid thoughts? Yes, Prabhuji. I'll give you a very simple way to avoid thoughts, okay? And this is a very powerful technique. This is used by Japanese managers and Japanese students. It's a very simple technique. And I'm telling you all, you should try it in your studies, okay? 25 minutes, chunks of time, do one thing. So that means you should keep a clock, which is a 25 minute um, time clock, basically. In 25 minutes, you should set an alarm or something. So that means for those 25 minutes, you don't look at any phones, you don't talk to anyone, no watching screens, no thinking about anything else except your studies. Only 25 minutes. And then after those 25 minutes, give your mind time to do whatever it wants. So start doing chunks of 25 minutes each. So the way I understand the human mind is, if you tell your mind, I'm going to study for the next three hours, you end up doing nothing. <laughs> you sit in front of the book, and one and a half hours, two hours, you'll not do anything. Your mind will go here and there and all that. And then effectively you only end up studying for those 25 minutes, basically. So yes. this technique, huh? Yes, sir, that is ah, the problem. Ah, that's what I'm saying you. So basically this technique is that don't give your mind three hours to study. Only pick up 25 minutes. And in those 25 minutes, take so much portion, much more than you can ever cover. Okay? And put your full intense energy in those 25 minutes. And then take a break for 10, 15 minutes. And in that break, do whatever you want. Enjoy yourself, have fun. And then again, come back another 25 minutes. And time those time your 25 minutes, okay? It's called the Pomodoro technique. It's a very powerful time management technique. Keep these chunks of 25 minutes each, you will achieve a lot more than what you can ever achieve in keeping long chunks of time, okay? And your mind will not be so distracted in 25 minutes. It's much easier to hold the mind for shorter durations of time, okay? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Thank you. Hare Krishna. So, uh, those who have more questions, Prabhuji will be coming down. You can approach him individually and he'll give you his time. So now, there are a few announcements. Uh, we have a very special guest today. Uh, those who are preparing, preparing for IITs, for you, I can tell there are some professors from IIT here. We have doc, uh, Dr. K. Vanuvarthi, Department of Metallurgy. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Professor uh, Dr. Uh, Shribad Garge, Department of Mathematics, with, yeah, with his wife, uh, Anuradha Garge Mataji, and their twins, Kannad and Saveri. Hare Krishna. Let us welcome them loudly. Hari Bol. Hari Bol. Hari Bol. Also, we have uh, with us Vinay Ji, Vinay Chavanji, founder and managing director of Sri Vinay Engineering Services. And there are more names, but I am not able to find out. So, let us welcome all these special guests by loudly chanting three times. Hari Bol. Hari Bol. Hari Bol. Also, uh, those who have come for first time, who are the first time, kindly Stand up at your place. Those who are come for the first time, kindly stand up. We want to welcome you. And those who are outstanding, you can sit down. <laughs> okay. 
So let us welcome all these newcomers by loudly chanting three times. Hari Va! Hari Va! Hari Va! Uh, you have a very special gift there at Bhaktivedanta Hall. So when you go down, have Prasad, go to Bhaktivedanta Hall. You can receive your gifts. Also, you can meet the devotees there. They will guide you. Thank you for coming. Hare Krishna, sit down. Just wait. Then, uh, next Prerna festival is on 4th of May by His Grace Gaur Vilas Prabhu. And I am going to tell you one mantra. Okay? This mantra, please remember. Each one, help one. What is the mantra? Each one, help one. Okay, so today around 600 devotees have come. So is it possible 1200 next time? No. Okay, so each one? So please bring out more of your friends and make them fortunate. Also, uh, the, another announcement is this is a live session going on here for the IYS boys who are very sincere. We are going to start IYS online lectures. Okay, and these lectures are very important for your devotional life. The model we are going to cover is 5S model. So S for Swastya, S for Sadhana, S for Shastra, S for Seva, all 5S models will be covered. So every second Saturday, there will be an online class for IOS boys, okay? And you will be getting the links also. And now there will be one more announcement. We have a special Offering for those who want to understand Bhagavad Gita, there is a course called Discover Yourself, which is beginning from 20th of April. So, Jinko Gita Sikhnai, DYS course attend kar sakte hai. For registrations, please meet at Youth Corner. Jo kodiyan hai niche, yaha pe ab register kar sakte hai. Okay, and most important announcement. Okay, do you want to hear? You are going to have a wonderful prasad down. Okay. So now we want to thank all the volunteers who came here early in the morning, afternoon. Ten devotees came afternoon and they have made 600 batata vadas for you. Okay? So I want to announce. Morning sabji cutting is done by boys guided by Achyutanand Prabhu. Hari bol for them. Hari bol. Batata Vada making is done by Krishna Gaur Prabhu and Mukund Mala Prabhu's counselors. Today's plate washing will be done by Prem Kushur Prabhu's devotees. Yeah. And today's main services have been done by IOS devotees guided by Rishikesh Anand Prabhu and Gaur Vilas Prabhu. So thank you so much. Now we'll be having a Kirtan. And now it will be a sitting Kirtan and will be nice Kirtan. Okay, so please sit down. So before going, let us again thank His Grace Shubhilas Prabhu by loudly